Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and today I am going to get a, um, after I do this video, I'm going to go get a little, it's not anything fancy, it's a little John boat, um, because I found a lake I was going to start taking my son's fishing on, so I, I found a, just a used John boat that I was going to get, and then just put a trolling motor on it and go bass fishing with the with my sons, and so... I've been working on trying to get that so it'll fit in the back of my truck and and so I can strap it down so that's what I will be doing today okay um, let me show you this first because this is really interesting I want you to listen to this um, from free American spirit here we go crypto trying to hook up with Biden listen to this if I can get the play there we go a consortium of leaders in crypto hoping to have the ear of President Biden's staff. Will they get it? Charlie Gasparino has details on how they're trying to make that happen. Charlie. Yeah, Liz, uh, I don't know what Bitcoin is doing today, but the uh, growing acceptance of down. cryptocurrencies, it's down or up? It's down. Okay, it's down a little bit today, but as you know, it's it's it's, it's been going gangbusters and the growing acceptance of uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology has caught the eye of the Biden administration. Everyone from Janet Yellen, uh, the Treasury Secretary to the, yes, the incoming SEC Chief Gary Gensler is talking about incoming regulation, uh, doing something to make sure the public is safe and knows what it's getting into when it buys the stuff, when it engages in in the in cryptocurrency. Uh, because of that, uh, the cryptocurrency's main trade group, the Blockchain Association, uh, is telling the Fox Business Network exclusively that it's aiming to meet with. Remember that Blockchain Association. Key members of the Biden administration have already met with staff to try to convince them to hold their horses on regulation and trying to change the reputation of Bitcoin and, 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 and blockchain and, and cryptocurrencies from, as they put it, that it goes beyond financing of criminal enterprises. That's a quote from, from a, an executive at the Blockchain Association. So they're, they're planning to meet with top people in, inside the Biden administration to prove their case. The people they're aiming to meet with, and from what I understand, they are working to schedule a meeting. It's with Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, who's had some harsh comments about cryptocurrency and, and blockchain. And Actually Waleed about Bitcoin. Adama, I, I might be mispronouncing his name. He's a former BlackRock executive. I believe it's Wally Adaimo, who... Um, wonder why a, blo a former BlackRock executive is wanting to go lobby. Who is the acting uh, uh, deputy treasury secretary, who's essentially in charge of this of this uh, space of, uh, of the financing uh, world. Uh, they're trying to get meetings with them. They're trying to press their case with them. They are worried that uh, regulation is coming down the pike. And it's interesting, you know, most, as you know, most... Wall Street, Wall Street, and major industries do have a trade group that meets with, um, with, with that meets with policymakers. So, in a sense, this is not unusual, but it is coming at a, a very interesting time when cryptocurrency is is becoming uh, a huge uh, focal focal point of regulation and gaining wider acceptance in many in many parts of of the business world. So uh, that's what's going on, Liz, uh, on a down day. Um, cryptocurrency people are looking up so to speak uh back to you okay so let's look just so you know what's really going on this is the blockchain association that is going to the biden administration so might be interesting to show you who the members of the blockchain association are and here they come well Let's see what we have. We have Anchorage, we have Binance.us, Blockchain Capital, Circle, BlockFi, Digital Currency Group. We have eToro, Filecoin Foundation. We've got Grayscale, Kraken. All the names are here, folks. There's Ripple, there's Stellar, the two that are majorly in the game. Um, who else do we have? That's about it. Um, so this is what's important right here is they're a part of the thing. Let me show you something else that's important. When you look at the about, I think it's the about us section, 
our team, the Blockchain Association. You'll never guess who's on the, I think the, well, first of all, you need to see this. Ron Hammond is the guy who did work for um, Congressman, I think it was Warren Davidson. Then he went to Ripple, and now he's at the Blockchain Association. And looky who else we have here. Well, right there. Our board, Stuart Alderati, Alderati General Counsel of Ripple. He's, the, he's also the general counsel of the Blockchain Association. You also have, actually, he's not, he's just on the board. But what's interesting is you've got him, the general counsel at Ripple, on the, blo on the board of the Blockchain Association, and Candace Kelly, who's general counsel at Stellar, the Stellar Foundation, I guess. And then you got one of the legal people from Kraken, legal people from Digital Currency Group, Binance.us. Everybody's in the same club, folks. Speaking of Stuart Alderati, he tweeted this out yesterday. Today, Ripple filed our answer to the SEC's amended complaint, notably with full transparency to the SEC. XRP was listed on 200 plus exchanges, and billions of money dollars in XRP were bought, sold monthly. Money market makers had daily XRP transactions and third party products not developed by Ripple used XRP. We're looking forward to learning more about the SEC's meetings with major XRP market participants who asked for guidance but were never told that XRP transactions would be suspect to the federal securities laws. Full filing here. So he puts the filing up, but this is where, look, this is where the smoke is, folks. Write it down. The smoke and probably fire is in, in the SEC's communications. They, they said or did not say something that led ex major exchanges like Coinbase to think it was okay to list XRP, and that is where the bodies are buried, folks. They do not want that information out because it's like um, I heard somebody say the other day, they said it's almost as if Jay Clayton and the SEC were intentionally trying to lay a trap for Ripple. And I believe when you hear that, when you find those communications and you see what was said to, to almost to, to keep the trap laid, when you say, see what was said to, that, that led those, those different companies to believe, those exchanges to believe that they, it was okay to list XRP. When you start to hear that information, that is the part. That's why I think this thing is going to go pretty quickly to a settlement because I don't think the SEC wants anybody to know how probably underhanded that whole thing went because something smells terrible in this whole thing, and I think everybody knows it. Okay, this is what they actually filed, and I'm sure the official um, attorney that talks about the SEC Ripple case of the Digital Asset Investor Channel Jeremy Hogan, that's not a designation he asked for or n even talked to me about. That's just a designation that I gave him on the channel for fun. He's with Legal Briefs, and I'm sure he's going to do a lawyerly summary of this, and I'll cover it when he does. Um, XRP Crypto Wolf, this is from the, the this is from articles written on the on that amended uh, the response to the amended complaint. Ripple says XRP was designed to be a better Bitcoin and more secure because control over the XRP ledger is more distributed. Ripple also claims the SEC is responsible for fifteen billion dollars in damages to XRP holders, who they're supposed to be protecting. All true. Um, then also this from XRP Crypto Wolf. Ripple compares XRP to oil and diamonds in its response to the SEC's amended complaint. Ripple holding a large percentage of the cryptocurrency is similar to Exxon holding oil. And this comparison has been made before. Here's Brad Garlinghouse back in, I think, 2019, maybe. XRP Ledger. The XRP Ledger had utility prior to Ripple's existence. Uh, you know, certainly we are an interested party in the success of the XRP Ledger, for sure. We own a lot of XRP. Uh, but it's a little bit like saying, you know, Exxon owns a lot of oil. That doesn't make oil a security. Mm -hmm. Exxon's clearly interested in how to, you know, we can argue about the health of the, you know, I'm not here to debate carbon emissions. Do <laughs> <or this. laughs> you want to get into that? No. This is the example I wanted to choose here. But suffice it to say, Exxon cares a lot because they have a lot of exposure to a, in this case, commodity called oil. Is Exxon doing things that are trying to drive a healthy ecosystem around oil? Yeah. 
Okay. And then that yes, same legend. that same comparison was was used by Corey Johnson, who was the spokesperson for Ripple back, I think, in 2019 as well. Listen. Endlessly frustrating to me that people are unable to distinguish the fact that XRP and Ripple are separate things. I mean, no one calls Exxon Mobil oil, right? <laughs> there's oil and there's Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil has a, a vested interest in, in uh, seeing the oil is successful, but that doesn't mean it's the same thing. All right. So, yeah, that's a great comparison. I think Greg Kidd actually used that comparison in one of my conversations with him. XRP Crypto, well, Goldman Sachs Crypto Survey shows 22% of respondents expect $100,000 plus Bitcoin within the next 12 months. Goldman Sachs surveyed 280 clients and 40% have exposure to cryptocurrency. 60% expect their cryptocurrency to increase over the next one to two years. Now, folks, this is significant because 200, they, they surveyed 200 of their clients. Goldman Sachs clients are the wealthiest people in the world. And the wealthiest people in the world have 40% um, exposure to cryptocurrencies. 60% of them expect their cryptocurrency to increase over the next one to two years. Um, is, is the writing on the wall there, folks? I think so. All right. Um, XRP Bart um, sent me this. Charles Schwab is exploring white label solutions for crypto brokerage. Charles Schwab is weighing the possibility of launching a crypto brokerage. Well, let me, let me refresh that. I'm not a subscriber to the block. It says the service would rely on the tech of the crypto native partner according to sources. Well, as I've said a thousand times on this channel, not some of the traditional financial firms are coming to digital assets. All of them. And it involves all of the money, all of the firms, all of the money. Okay, moving along. I wanted to mention this. Um, I Trust Capital tweeted this out yesterday. Cold Storage 2.0 has arrived. If you care about maximum security for your digital assets, you need to learn about our new integration. Folks, this is part of the reason that I chose to open a Roth IRA and a SEP IRA with I Trust Capital because I... I actually looked into who their digital asset custody was and I learned that Curve was owned by the or one of their major investors was the Digital Currency Group, which is a major investor in Coinbase and Ripple. And then I called them independent of iTrust Capital. Um, but here's the article that from yesterday. And what's interesting is called Curve Air Gap. Um, in, in other words, when you go and, and by the way, the, the links in the description of this video, but when you go and open these I trust capital IRAs, you can either roll your 401k from your old job. If you got laid off or whatever, you can roll it into an I trust capital IRA. I've got a coupon code on that in the description. And then when you go on there and you buy, um, digital assets, they're stored at the institutional level. It's the, it's the same kind of thought pattern that you have when you buy stocks in your Charles Schwab account. You don't think about where those stock certificates are. Well, now Curve has set up that same type thing for digital assets, and it's, but it's more significant than that. But first, let's read this. Um, uh, it says, the air gap solution is, ex is an extension of the already hyper secure MPC technology that removes the single port point of failure of private keys for signing cryptocurrency transactions. AirGap preserves the final signing process to a node wholly disconnected from my from any network, making our wallet secure a true second generation cold storage solution. And this it's not a coincidence that PayPal just bought Curve. Okay? And by the way, anybody from PayPal listening, if I was PayPal, you know what I'd be doing? I'd if I just bought Curve, I'd be looking to buy I trust capital <laughs> because that company's got it going on. Okay, finally, I wanted to show you this. This is my father, the official father of the digital asset investor channel. And I had a conversation with him about this yesterday. He started his own YouTube channel, which you need to go subscribe to. You're going to like this video he did today. CFTT TV is his channel. You can go and subscribe. You need to subscribe. I did. And listen, what he did today is he did a he did a a comparison, and my dad's like I am. 
he speaks the um, he, he tries to break things down for the average Joe <laughs> because when when some people start talking we get confused um, so what he did is he did a comparison this is great did a comparison of the flare network and Cardano and Ethereum slash Ethereum 2.0. I'm going to play just a little bit of it right here. Opinion the best. You're about to hear my thoughts. So Flare, Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0, and Cardano are all decentralized blockchain-based systems that share the same goal of bringing smart contract functionality to cryptocurrencies. We discussed that sentence in its entirety in my last show, Flare Series 101. Even I had to rewatch my show several times to totally understand things. So, all three of these smart contract systems are decentralized, blockchain-based systems, bringing contract utility to cryptocurrencies. If you did not see my 101 series, you really need to go back and watch it, and then watch this one. There's another very, very important similarity all three smart contract systems utilize the Ethereum virtual machine. The Ethereum virtual machine is a blockchain-based software platform which allows developers to create decentralized apps. Anyway, this is this is big time, and it, it, at the when when you get done watching these things, what what a, a video like this it really hits home. That I mean, and when I think about the XRP ledger and what is being done and all you know you always hear these developers re refer to how they've been building and all this if you look at the XRP ledger if you look at what Ripple has been working on for the last eight years it's like they built the digital asset of everything it's like they they covered every base they're working on NFTs it's like they're working on they've got a smart contract platform they're fast, secure, scalable. All the everything that, that you that that you would want in one digital asset, with branches that do where it can go and do just about anything. Ripple thought about it, and and they thought, and then now there's developers that are working independent of Ripple on this, everywhere. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button and tell your friends and family to go subscribe to CFTT TV because my father, the official father of the Digital Asset Investor channel, is doing some in-depth videos that I think provide a lot of value to the digital asset space.